Now here's that <clears throat> girl we met. <laughs> oh. I'm not an ancient. I'm a... I, oh. <laughs> I'm a... Uh, <clears throat> Who translated into ELW? Ooh. Who... How... Somet okay. Sometimes you see bad translations and poor uh, localization. Okay. Sometimes grammar is fucked up. You think, oh, it must be easy once it's been translated, but then you see the raw translation and it's like, what? <laughs> and that's why certain things get through in like Final Fantasy VII, where it's like, this guy am sick. <laughs> that could have used it once over, but I'm sure it's just like, <laughs> you know, no matter how thorough you are, you're gonna let a few things through. Yeah. The rest of the game is fine, so yeah. a, a mistake here or there. Well, that's the price you pay for enjoying something that was made in somewhere else. Yeah. You know, not but, not for our country. Yeah, it wasn't but, made for us. <laughs> but, 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 but how many times have they said e Ooh. in this game? Yeah. Like, they're a key component. It'd be like if someone translated ancient as, like, emphem. Yeah. It's like A-N-F-M-N. -N. Like, what? So I'm wondering, why the fuck did Rudy climb up the face of that thing? Those other guys obviously just made their way, like, some easy way. They're probably, he's they, just, they took the stairs. He took all this, night. It was a... <laughs> he was, literally took all <laughs> night. It was daytime yeah. by the time he got that, up there. That was a joke at the end of, um... <laughs> What is it? Almost Heroes? With Chris Farley and the guy who played Chandler on Friends. <laughs> Where at the very end of it, it's like, oh, you have to race down the mountain to beat Lewis and Clark to the Pacific Ocean. And so Chris Farley takes this really dangerous route right down the side of the mountain. And he ends up, like, riding a bald eagle somehow, <laughs> carrying... I totally forgot about that movie. Yeah, somehow... Is that, like, his last movie? <laughs> I, I, I feel like it is, but there might be one more afterwards. Um... We'll talk about what's going on in a moment as soon as I'm done talking at the end of the, <laughs> the seminal classic, no, uh, Almost Heroes. Um, but yeah, he somehow rides a bald eagle down and like, drops him in the ocean. And then he comes stumbling up onto the beach and the whole rest of their adventuring party is standing there. And like, you did it, you did it! And they're like, yeah, and then once the excitement dies down, it's like, well, how'd you all get down here? I'm like, oh, uh, some natives carved a little path. <laughs> they had steps even, it was really nice. <laughs> yeah, it's like, Rich, you can't have your toy. I'm sorry, you can't be making that noise while we're recording. You can have it later. You can't just have get... puppy chewing noises. I'll just give you a treat nom, later. Nom, nom, nom. Don't get excited. You don't get a treat now. Did we have our sweet party yet? I know. Uh, we... we did. We had the party, and nothing happened. And then uh, they went to bed, and then shit popped off. And some people who ate demon seeds, I guess, they were turned all... into monsters. So what do we? Did we do we we went. We went to the little place where everyone thought they'd be safe. They weren't safe though. Uh, a lot of people died. A dog turned into a weird tank. Yeah, that beast. was awesome. That was horrible, or it could have been if this game had better graphics. Um, and they upgraded our golem, so that it can now punch a hole in the photosphere. Oh, where's so that? So we're like gonna go, um, to the north like directly north of us you just have to go through a few uh shallow water basins look at that diagonal walk is yeah there. they put a maybe you can just go north from right here actually the diagonal walk on this golem seems uh slower than just going straight it, maybe it's just the way it looks but it almost yeah. feels like well it probably is because you're making both lateral and well you're you know, you're going diagonally so you're not going in one pure direction right up here right yeah yep. punch it it's time to assault the final base. Must punch. Cool. <laughs> That's all I can say. Wait, said he's gonna upgrade it. Go back to town and we'll talk to the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Just got this sweet walk. Yeah. <laughs> you gave your golem a giant pair of shades. Why? Just because it looks cool. Look at him. Because he's gonna mm, bow bow everywhere. <laughs> like, mm, mm, ooh, yeah. <laughs> wow, wow. Well, what I think, oh yeah, it was um, it was Hey Arnold in one of the Christmas episodes where Arnold wants to find the the missing like daughter of his Vietnamese neighbor, and oh, yeah, and Helga the whole episode Helga wants like a pair of boots that are called like Spumoni. Yeah, and every yeah. time she's wearing them, it's just like Spumoni. 
<laughs> That's a good episode. Yeah, it's a really surprisingly touching episode. Like Helga's not a complete bitch in that in that episode. No, because it's like the, she finds the guy who can find you know the daughter, and he's like, I don't have time for that. I gotta do all this fucking Christmas shopping, little she's girl. She's like, here's she's your like fucking boots, dude. Yeah, she's like, I'll do it. I'll find everything. She finds everything but the boots, and the guy's like, Fuck you! I don't care if you did everything. You didn't get the boots. Go to hell, little girl. Because they're in New York, and that's how you talk to children. <laughs> And then she goes home, and her dad, Big Bob Pataki, the Earth Gone was called the Ford of the Gods, held the machine created count of the demon race. It may be mankind's last fortification. Can we all fit inside? I don't know. I'm an armsmeister. I learned everything I know from old man Zipet. <laughs> Zipet! <laughs> Were you going to finish that word? Nope, that's it. Oh, I guess we did have to talk to him. Cool. But yeah, and then her dad's like, hey, I got you those boots. And she's like, fuck yes. And then she starts shrutting around and just like, spamoning. Yeah. But and then, and she then realizes, like, oh, the two I, rune drives will restore the weakened power. I just want to point out how that robot's arm is going behind the tree. Yeah, but the tree <laughs> is also going behind his arm. And I just realized this guy's name is Nikola, <laughs> as in Tesla, which was fine at the time. Because this wasn't the internet being like, oh my god, Nikola Tesla. He's the real hero of America. <laughs> He's the real American G.I. Joe hero. <laughs> He's the real Christopher Columbus. He's the one who found everything. <laughs> this music's pretty sweet. I really hope someone or a group of people have remixed this entire album Wait, on OC Remix. Is there Nikolai and Nicola? Both? The both names? Maybe. Ah, uh, we don't pay attention. No. <laughs> We're talking about, hey, I just spent five minutes talking about a Christmas special of Hey Arnold. I want to watch on. that now. Yeah, it's I'll, probably on Netflix. Yeah, it's a I, good episode. I really want to watch that yeah. right now. I forget how good of a character Helga actually is when she, yeah. as the season, you know, as the mm -hmm. show goes on. It's, uh, the best friends were talking about, they're like, oh, I, I hate it. I hate the Hey Arnold. I'm like, what the hell? Like, it's not up there with Red and Stimpy or, you know, Doug, but... It's a pretty good show. Yeah, it is Nikolai and Nikola. Jamie was watching uh, Daria the other day. Mm -hmm. And that, it's it's actually kind of entertaining to watch. Did you ever watch that? I've, I've never a whole episode. <laughs> I, I would just see her sometimes pop up on Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> and sometimes I would see an episode. Is a world where innocent children and canned people are the first to die worth protecting? Well, they only died because you weren't protecting them you properly. So protecting them. <laughs> yeah. The antiphasing shield on the Earth Golem is the ultimate defense mechanism. Oh, just Anything that touches the shield will disintegrate immediately. Oh, so, you know, punch the final boss with it, I guess. Just keep walking. You just walk towards the dome and it don't just, stop. Yeah. It's like this comic where Batman is in... Batman's in prison for some reason. Everyone knows he's Bruce Wayne. And Bat a Superman, in his Superman getup, is like talking to him over the phone. You know, with like the glass partition uh, in between. Yeah, yeah. And Superman's like, why'd you do it? Why'd you kill him? Because, like, I guess Batman finally killed someone, and he's in jail for it. And, like, I think Batman did it so Superman wouldn't have to. Man, that's... Superman kills people all the time, doesn't he? Now he does, apparently. I just and assumed, he has in the past, but I just it's... assumed Superman, without even trying, kills people all well, the time. Well, he's not supposed to, because he's Superman. He's strong enough to find a way around it. And Batman... Bat I, I have a hard time believing he doesn't kill people yeah. on accident without knowing mm -hmm. it. You but know? I think... <laughs> anyway, I think Batman, like, killed someone so Superman wouldn't have to. Mm. And it's like he reveals this is a Superman over the phone. And um, Superman, like, is holding the phone for a moment, and then he drops it, and there's a panel of him just walking through the partition like it's not even there. <laughs> like, it's just... He's not, like, bursting, like, you know, tearing through it. Like, he's just walking, yeah. and it's just splitting in front of him. <laughs> and then he just gives Batman a hug. It's like, you're gonna get me out of jail? <laughs> nope. But you just... <laughs> almost like, you know, you see a character, like, phasing through a solid wall like that, but just imagine yeah. the wall is just, like, the glass is fucking exploding. <laughs> and it's still but going, no, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's moaning. <laughs> <laughs> if any part of your body touches the shield, you lose it. <laughs> Let's test that theory out, handpan. No! <laughs> Okay, okay, we get the message. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Uh, okay, princess, do your thing. Tell this guy to neutralize the defenses. They are not tools, true, true. <laughs> Please, Earth Golem, would you help us? <laughs> Must punch! <laughs> oh, come on, I hope he has lines. 
That wasn't a punch at all. No. Riggs, I don't know what your deal is, but you gotta leave. <laughs> <laughs> You're not that cute. This is fantastic! This is powerful, alright! And they say the anti-phasion shield is a defensive weapon! Let's kill him! <laughs> uh, let's get inside this thing. The, the enemy won't stay quiet much longer. Rugs! What are you t This isn't your LP. Don't be that guy. Hey guys, you guys, you guys care if I just show up and play a few rounds? A few oh, you guys are recording? A few like rounds? <laughs> this is a PS1 RPG. <laughs> What are these red tiles uh, do? Probably painful or... <laughs> <Woo -hoo>! Yeah. <laughs> Riggs, no! I, th I think you have Riggs, to blow those up. Go to bed, Riggs. Get out of here. You can't. You can't. You don't know speeds. <laughs> Riggs, just go to bed. Go on. Good boy. Just Zoom. get out of here. Yep, you blow those up because that's... Man, I mean, how much it hurt? <laughs> Even if it was... Incredibly painful. It's not like we don't have 255 Mega Berries. <laughs> oh man, so that Paul Stanley book you got me. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, Paul, Paul Stanley book, right? The yeah. epilogue. He, it's just one big fucking metaphor about how he is this rock star who wears a mask on stage, oh, no. and how he wears a mask, or at least wore a mask in real life, <laughs> and how how the person who he was on stage wasn't who he was in real life, but then the person that who he was portraying on stage became who he was, and uh. when does the mask come off? Blah blah blah, just mask, <laughs> mask, uh, like puns and you know uh. things like that, <laughs> just left and right, and then you find out. Well, if you ne never knew already, you find out that he was born without an ear mm -hmm. and and deaf on that ears yeah. or that clump as well. <laughs> and and he points that out a few times. Like he's like, yeah, I, I, that was the main cause of all my problems while I was younger is because people like kids made fun of my ear. I had a really hard time uh, in school because I couldn't listen very well to teachers and and stuff like that, right? And so you're like, okay, you don't have an ear. We got it. You don't have an ear. <laughs> and so then at the end of his epilogue, he talks about how he finally found happiness. And he uses the fucking term, I smiled ear to, or I, I'm smiling ear to ear. And I don't uh, get it. Oh. I don't, I don't, I'm like, you just said you have, you're like super, like, are you trying to, what are you trying to say by saying you're smiling ear to ear? Could you have picked a different metaphor? Or is that, were you trying to point out the fact that you talked about your... Your lumpy clump of a <laughs> of a stump on your head, like I don't I don't understand, Paul Stanley. Like you just said, you're smiling ear to ear, but no, you it's only, just a chest. but you only have one ear, and so yeah, I, I'm reading it still. Why didn't you just say I'm smiling ear to oh ear to stump or ear to wait was that the beginning know. or the end? This was in the beginning. At okay, the so end it's of the, the, epilogue, the prologue or prologue. Yeah, that's right, not epilogue. I don't. I uh, thought you'd finish the whole book, and I was gonna go really. Oh no, not yet. <laughs> no P prologue. Yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah, so the prologue kind of just sums up his life like really quickly, and like the you know what you're about. You know, it's a prologue. Yeah. And but yeah, he ends the prologue with I was smile. I, you know, I smile ear to ear. <laughs> All right, and I'm just like, dude. You, I don't understand why you would say that after you just talked about how much you know pain not having that ear caused you. And <laughs> like, is this an invitation for anyone who talks to you going forward to just make ear jokes? Are you not just... there are that many? I mean, especially when corn is in season. Like, <laughs> but or maybe he's just getting that one out of the way because he knows that it's mm. it's like, well, you know, they're gonna make the joke. So yeah, do I have to drop on top of him? Is that uh, I think you can ignore that. I think you can ignore those. No, you can't ignore them. What about um, what about skates? Maybe. <laughs> oh, wait, no, that's not the skates button. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I just want to see them. Scats. Oh, nope. Lightning is faster than scats. Maybe go down. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just keeps getting shocked. Just wait, keeps me, throwing them on I'm it. I'm gonna see if I can drop onto that one. Mm. But yeah, oh no, I'm I'm reading it still. I'm I'm reading uh it just because. I mean, I do like Kiss, Yeah. but <laughs> it's just, it's not particularly good. <laughs> it's just him. Well, it was on sale for $1.99. And that face on the cover. <laughs> That's kind of why I got it for you. He's just smiling. Because I knew you'd see it and go, why? <laughs> it's, it's like so much why about it. Like, 
<laughs> Why has he got that grin <laughs> on the cover? Oh, man. I just like reading about people who had fucked up childhoods. Uh-huh. Because it just makes me wonder. And it's like, he had these fucked up parents who treated him just... Oh, yeah, it did oh. work. That is a weird perspective. Yeah, that I, that is. It looks like it's in the distant. Mm-hmm. Like there's a gap between. Yeah, that's what I thought too. Below. Okay. I'm reading his book and I'm like, how many generations of parents treating kids like, you know, fucked up little nuisances? Like, <laughs> how many times did that happen before, you know, finally someone was like, I'm not gonna do this to my kids. I mean, obviously it took a long time uh-huh. because, you know, look at us. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's obviously just. You know, finally, ha- I mean, it's happened to, you know, there are parents, obviously, there are people who are older than us that are parents that have made the choice to not be shitty parents. Yeah. But. We know, I mean, we know people our age mm-hmm. who are like, oh, I love my parents so much. And yeah. Like, I don't feel awkward at all talking to them on the phone. Yeah. You know, they, they taught me to do things. <laughs> and But it's like reading about him and his parents, like, fuck, man, you had some fucking shitty mm-hmm. parents. Like, at least sometimes we get art out of it. Or interesting <laughs> art. I mean, otherwise we wouldn't have the Binding of Isaac. Mm-hmm. But it's just like... It's like at what... It's a, it's, at what it, cost. Yeah, yeah. It, it's the definitive at what cost question. It's like, yeah, you have this these ni- ar- nice art pieces, uh, you know, whatever form, you know, mm-hmm. that help you uh, or help the viewer. Those are not vampires, by the way. They help, they help the viewer or reader or whatever overcome their issues that yeah. they had but it's like yeah so that's nice but if, if all parents just weren't shitty <laughs> maybe we wouldn't need all that we wouldn't need that <laughs> those they could be different pieces of art yeah <laughs> but yeah it's just man his parents are the worst like mm. like just there's this one time he talks about his dad comes home drunk and is just like really looking for forgiveness in his son, but not for anything he did to his uh-huh. son, but for just things that he did in his own life. Uh-huh. And talks about how um, he knew that his, you know, his mom and dad have a shitty relationship, and there was this girl that his dad would always, you know, go talk to and stuff, even though he's married. Yeah, and, go and talk to with air quotes. Yeah, and then, uh, and then one night his dad received a phone call that was basically like some guy saying if you don't stop talking to that woman i'm gonna cut your balls off Mm -hmm. and then they like hid in their apartment and you know people they were they were under threat like they the the kids they didn't know what the you know little paul stanley and his sister didn't know Uh what the fuck was going on you know the the parents are just hiding out afraid that they're gonna die oh i know that sensation (laughs) (laughs) and i was like this sounds familiar Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) yeah like just shitty parents just, you know, his sister is, has, I can't, I'm not going to be able to carry any of this. No. Potion very probably potion. No full revive, but even then. But, uh, but yeah, so that it's, it's, I don't know why it's entertaining to read about a kid with another, with a shitty childhood, oh. but I just like reading it because <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's right. I'm not, you know, there, there are much worse childhoods out there than what I have. Oh, sure. But. Like, mine could have been a lot worse. Mm. Thank God it wasn't. Mm. It was just pretty bad. Um, yeah. <laughs> some people uh, weren't... Well, some people were more unlucky, mm. I should say. I was about to say weren't as lucky, but then like, oh, was I lucky? No. <laughs> yeah, just because you had... What just, is that, I mean, What is this guy that I'm fighting know. with his cape? He's like a... Russian cap or something? Uh, uh, oh, it's like he, a sailor hat? What is that? I, uh, he's like a... He's, he's Rashid. He's Rashid from Street Fighter V, but he's also a spooky skeleton. Oh, I also, I love uh, now this game, we're in a really kind of future-looking place oh, that yeah. does not fit in with the rest of the world. No. But, like, it makes sense, and I love that the treasure chests are now like, like future, cap- yeah. Yeah, capsules or something. Uh-huh. It reminds me of um, Secret of Evermore. Hmm. Because you jump through time a lot in that uh-huh. game, and so like you know the the treasure chests are all future and cool yeah. looking. I like that. <laughs> because I I guess the demons are just aliens. It seems like like they they came from some world called Hyades. Don't cast sleepy on me. Oh no! Oh now we're so sleepy. Oh man, gotta go take a nap. Oh so sleepy. <laughs> 
it's it's a hard it's a joke you gotta be careful in making. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta pull the accent yeah. out of it a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, I was able to get whatever was in there, but I don't... Yeah, that was a hearty apple. Mm. I wonder if it's gonna go solve mysteries. <laughs> There's no hearty apple. That's weird. How many of these apples? We got? Uh, hearty. Um, four. Four. I can eat a couple. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. Even though I think it's still full of fiber from the other ones. <laughs> Just still on the toilet. <laughs> yeah, you get all these. And you get that too. I want him to be like how Cloud always is in my Final Fantasy VII playthroughs. Oh, sure. Yeah. Which but... is just counter everything. Yeah. And, and just destroy. <laughs> <laughs> That's just always what Cloud is. He, uh, you can't, I guess you can't cover in this, uh, it seems like, but in Final Fantasy yeah, there's VII. there's no like, cover mechanic. Yeah, so. I would have Cloud cover and then counter, mm -hmm. and then like, you know, hit him four times, uh -huh. and it was just the best. Oh, yeah. Like, the, my biggest gripe with Final Fantasy VII is that it's a bit too easy. Oh, like, yeah. It, oh, yeah. <laughs> it, there are a few bosses where they, they're kind of tricky, but it's not... It doesn't take too much leveling to, like, get past them. Mm. There's no real grind to it. But for the most part, you don't really need to get clever with the mechanics in order to proceed. There, there are some simple things you can do, which will give you an advantage. But it's like, you, you can kind of just give people whatever materia, you know. Just don't, oh, yeah. ca don't cast fire on the fire things. You'll be yeah. fine. I... I I think I've said this on another one of our playthroughs. I hope with the remake that they rebalance the difficulty. Yeah, me too. I, I would like to, I would like a kind of classic difficulty where basically the numbers are all the same or you know relative to however they change the combat system up, and then a more revamped, almost like Master Quest mm. sort of thing where everything is generally harder and there are more. Ooh, gotta <laughs> go around, I guess. Yeah, you know, things are generally harder, and there are more. Oh the shit! Fuck! Blue rope figure. The teardrop is this way. Who the fuck? <laughs> What's the matter? Don't you want it? <laughs> uh, so you expect us to just follow you? Uh, yeah, right. First of all, uh, who the hell are you? What do you want? You're afraid, aren't you? <laughs> he's so afraid. He's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quickly, he, he bumped into <laughs> into Manzig backing up. <laughs> Me? Uh, afraid. The one who does not have the courage to look at the truth is called a coward. A coward is afraid. <laughs> uh, Alright then, uh, I'll follow you. The photosphere is being prepped for travel. Hurry up and follow me. Ha! <laughs> 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 into the ground? <laughs> oh god. Oh, the door opened. True, she just throws himself into the ground. He just. Boom! <laughs> oh! <laughs> But yeah, basically, I'd just like them to remix the game a little bit to be more difficult and to kind of necessitate more clever use of the materia. Oh, yeah. Not. Like, I don't really picture, um, you know, Barrett being a guy who should be able to cast any elemental magic yeah. just left and right mm -hmm. without some kind of consequence or something. You know, I, like, I picture him as sort of like anyone in that game can equip any materia, but mm -hmm. him being, like, well, restorative and offensive materia aren't very useful on him because his magic is so low mm -hmm. that it just isn't potent. But, you know, he can benefit from using materia defensively or from spells that don't require potency, like haste and, you know, other white magics. So it's like, okay, I'll give those to Barret, and then at the start of the fight I can use him kind of to just buff everyone and then he can do his thing mm -hmm. and then another character can be on heal duty because they can actually put out the numbers. Whereas Barrett needs to DPS. Or Barrett is just kind of like, I'll tell you the truth. We share a common goal. I have no intention of fighting you people. You're beefy. <laughs> I need your assistance. We you must destroy Mother before the photosphere burns all of your guys. I've seen what you've d done to Zed. <laughs> Ooh. But like if Barrett's whoa, just whoa, kind of... was that the Was that the doom door sound? I, yeah, I said it earlier. Like oh. They used the doom door sound in this game. Twin orbs, awesome. What? So I guess you can just totally miss Rudy's arms if you don't look around. Because we never come back here. Twin orbs? Yeah, it would just be cool to have, you know, Final Fantasy no. VII without, like, just being able to throw materia on with all fucking totally yeah. 
totally like free of consequences. They, well, basically, they, they say like, oh, it, it, you know, you get. I don't know, attack or maybe they just like hover around him and then attack the one target. That'd be interesting. Hmm. Or not. Huh. <laughs> Weird. Again, earlier games could have really benefited from more expansive text options. Mm. Just so they'd be like, what the fuck does this do? Oh man, that guy's got cool punching. Uh, like, rocket punch. Yeah, fists Ske just come off. Rocket skeleton punches. But yeah, you have materia for the most part. It's like, oh, it, it, it boosts your, your MP and your magic, but it decreases your HP and your attack. But if you, early on, if you throw enough man, uh, materia on the one person, you'll, you'll notice. And even later on, it's like, okay, they're losing 15% of their health. That means mm. they're losing like 1,500 health. But again, you just easily compensate with a single HP up materia. Yeah. Which it's not hard to find a slot because it's like, well, I only need so many materia. And you get more slots as the game goes along. So it's like, just throw those in here anywhere. And then the Storm Drake. I wonder if as a kid, I just didn't quite get it that I would just load everyone up with materia and then maybe it seemed more difficult, but I uh -huh. just was like, oh man, I'm just getting my ass kicked. Time to grind. Oh, yeah. And then I just grind until I can progress and then just keep <laughs> all the materia. Yeah. I wish they addressed that in the uh, Advent Children, where it's like those guys are all loaded up, but then they're just <laughs> super easy to get their asses kicked. <laughs> You didn't realize that by using all that material, you lowered your HP. Mm -hmm. Heaven Children's a weird... No, oh, no, wait, the movie. I was thinking of um, Crisis Core. Uh-huh. Well, no, I was going to say Heaven Children is a weird game, but then, like, no, Heaven Children is still a weird movie. It was a weird movie. I have it on Blu-ray, and I've never actually watched it on Blu-ray. I've only watched a bootleg DVD that I got in a shady Asian market in a mall <laughs> back in 2006. I watched that movie, um, obviously, like, when it came out, yeah. and I, it's visually neat, and it's mm -hmm. fun to see all, all the buddies come together, yeah. and you're like, ah, but it was, yeah. Well, it does nothing for the story, no. and there's not a whole lot of story going on in it. There, there are just some people who seem to have a boner for Sephiroth, and it seems like they might be children who were, like, proto-Sephiroths, or mm -hmm. underwent the same sort of treatment that he did in the, in the womb. They're just like fanboys. Or like, maybe they're just fanboys. Mm, I, I can't even quite remember. They, they, they were like Sephiroth and Genova super fanboys. And like, mm. We're gonna do it. <laughs> we're cool. And then people are sick. It is Mega Man X shit. Oh, yeah. I am short on words. Mother's heirloom. The warm light. I'm so relieved. 